Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back for another video in the series of VLSI systems. Now this is our deep dive into the CMOS layout and stick diagrams. In today's video, we will walk you through how you can design a layout for CMOS circuits, what design rules are essential to follow, and how to create stick diagrams to simplify the process of layout. So let's just jump right in. First, let's quickly recap the basic building blocks of CMOS circuits, that is MOS transistors. As you may recall, these transistors are four terminal devices with a gate, a source, a drain, and a body. They act like switches, controlling current flow between the source and drain based on gate voltage. Both NMOS and PMOS transistors are used in CMOS circuits with complementary behavior. And MOS conducts when the gate is high and PMOS conducts when the gate is low. Now let's talk about how these MOS transistors are physically implemented in a CMOS layout. Layout design involves representing the actual layers and geometry on a silicon substrate. This includes defining the transistor widths, spacing and interconnects as well as ensuring that the design rules are followed to minimize defects. Now design rules describe the smallest possible dimensions and spacing between different components in the layout such as width of the transistors, the space between metal lines and the contact points between layers. These rules are crucial for ensuring that the design can be readily manufactured. Unfortunately, below 180 nanometer, design rules have become so complex and process specific that scalable design rules are difficult to apply. Nonetheless, a conservative but easy to use lambda based set of design rules for layouts with Two metal layers in an n -well process is as follows. Metal one, metal and diffusion have a minimum width and spacing of 4 lambda. Metal one has a preferred direction of horizontal, whereas metal two has a preferred routing direction of vertical. Contacts are 2 lambda by 2 lambda and must be surrounded by 1 lambda on the layers above and below. Polysilicon uses a width of 2 lambda. Polysilicon overlaps diffusion by 2 lambda where a transistor is desired and has a spacing of 1 lambda away where no transistor is desired. Polysilicon and contacts have a spacing of 3 lambda from other polysilicon or contacts. NWEL surrounds PMOS transistors by 6 lambda and avoids NMOS transistors by 6 lambda. WIAS also has spacing requirement of 3 lambdas. A wire is an electrical connection between layers in a physical electronic circuit that goes through the plane of one or more adjacent layers. Contact means it's a connection to source, drain, and poly, while a wire is used to make connection between two metal layers. I hope that's clear now. Now let's take a look at a common example, a CMOS inverter layout. In a CMOS inverter, one NMOS and one PMOS are connected in series. The NMOS transistor is placed in an N-well and the PMOS transistor is placed in a P-well. This layout allows the two transistors to switch complementary signals, creating the inversion effect. As you can see in this layout, the gate of the transistors is made of polysilicon, which is drawn vertically, and the source and drain regions are made of diffusion layers. The metal layers are used to connect the transistors to power, that is VDD, and ground. These layers must follow strict design rules for spacing and overlap to ensure proper functionality. Now that we understand the layout, let's talk about stick diagrams. Stick diagrams are a simplified way to plan the layout without worrying about exact dimensions. They will help you visualize the connectivity between components before you dive into the detailed layout. In a stick diagram, different colors are used to represent different layers. Or you can also use different designs as you can see here. Now, different designs or different colors represent different layers like polysilicon, diffusion, and metal. The vertical lines represent the gates, while horizontal lines represent the diffusion or metal layers. While stick diagrams aren't drawn to scale, they are an excellent tool for quickly planning out the arrangement of transistors and connections. Let's take a look at a stick diagram of a CMOS inverter. Here the gate of the NMOS and PMOS transistors are connected to the input while the output is connected between the source of the PMOS and the drain of the NMOS. This simple visual guide will help us efficiently design the detailed layout. You can see how the gate is represented by the vertical polysilicon lines 
and the fission layers are shown as horizontal lines. Metal is used to connect the power and ground rails. Once your layout is planned, it is important to ensure that it complies with the MOSIS layout design rules. MOSIS provides a set of scalable lambda-based design rules that simplify the design process for different manufacturing technologies. These rules specify the minimum width, spacing, and overlap for different layers to avoid fabrication issues. When designing layouts, it's also essential to estimate the area. This can be done by counting the wiring tracks. Each wire and transistor consume a wiring track, and you can multiply the number of tracks by 8 lambda to express the total area. Now, this is how it is done. Uh, because a wiring track is a space required for a wire that includes the width and spacing and as you can see it this one takes 4 lambda width and 4 lambda spacing so that makes a total of 8 lambda pitch that is why we multiply the whole wiring track number with 8 lambda estimating the area early on helps you optimize the layout for space efficiency and which is critical for high density designs to further illustrate how this works here is the layout of a 3 input NAND gate Notice how the diffusion, end diffusion, and pre-diffusion layers are arranged in horizontal strips and gates are in the vertical positions. The metal layers are used to connect VDD and ground. So let me tell you how you estimate the area. You just count the wiring tracks, horizontal wiring tracks, and vertical wiring tracks. Let's first count horizontal wiring tracks. So as you can see, VDD makes up one wiring track. This PMOS makes up second wiring track. This connection to the output makes up third wiring track. This NMOS makes up fourth wiring track. And this ground makes up fifth wiring track. So there are a total of five wiring tracks here. Five times eight lambda counts up to 40 lambda. So its height is 40 lambda. Now we will calculate vertical wiring tracks. For vertical wiring tracks, you can count number of contacts and wires. As you can see, this wire and polysilicon makes up one wiring track. This contact and polysilicon makes up second wiring track. This contact and one polysilicon makes up third wiring track. And this contact and the spacing to the next placed transistor makes up fourth wiring track. So there are a total of four wiring tracks. That means four times eight lambda. That gives us total of 32 lambda. This is how you estimate an area of a given layout or your designed layout so that we can know approximately how much space your circuit takes up. By carefully planning the wiring tracks and using efficient layout techniques, we can create complex logic gates like NAND and NOR while minimizing area and ensuring proper functionality. Now that's it for our tutorial on CMOS layout and stick diagrams. Mastering these techniques is essential for creating efficient, reliable VLSI designs. In the next video, I'll give you an example of how to draw a stick diagram from a Boolean equation. And in further videos, we'll dive into more advanced layout strategies and explore multi-level designs. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our VLSI series. Thanks for watching.